Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. Um, I know it's been a little bit since I made a video, probably about a month. I wanted to get back into the swing of things, haha. <laughs> and this is a suit that has been in the works for a little while now. Uh, I got it a little bit ago and it was super big on me, like extremely big, like probably three sizes too big. Took it to a seamstress. She did what she could on it. It really wasn't still up to par, but I, with McLean's pattern, I can get it. Like, it's not the easiest thing. I sent it to a buddy, Spider Slinger. As mentioned in the last video, he helps me out with a lot of my suits when there's things that I know should be done to them that I know I personally don't have the skill to do. Say hello and say goodbye. Okay. Thankfully, I was able to send this suit to him and he did all of the texturing work. He did all of the battle damaging work. He was able to make it a lot more tight on me. It's still a little long in the arms, but like, I don't care. <laughs> it's really that simple. Like, I know the kids don't notice things like that. They notice here and here. As long as that looks good, the kids are good. People that want to nitpick online, that's fine. Let me stop rambling. I'll show you guys the suit. I am talking about the TASM 1 suit. It looks incredible. But well, TASM 1 came out when I turned 11. So I was like super influential, you know, like just about to be a teenager. So uh, this was like kind of the Spider-Man that I grew up with personally. I know that sounds like really weird to hear. It's either Toby or Tom. But I'm kind of like right in the middle. I, when I was really little, I was growing up with Toby, but Andrew's the man. It looked good, look at that. All of that is fully textured. Those scratch marks are 100% accurate. I'll put some, uh, here's some pictures. You guys can see these scratches are 100% accurate to the film. They are all over the suit. You get a good look at that texture there. That's all 3D. He did a great job on this. Not much of it has peeled either. This was done on a Hero's Time suit. I have seen that some people have washed their suits after, after doing that and all the puff paint has fallen off. Uh, but he washed this before he sent it to me and nothing really peeled. A little bit in the butt and a little bit on the hands, but that's normal. So he also used a metallic red for the back spider, mixing that with regular red puff paint so we still get that dimension but you get that nice uh, shiny red. It reminds me a lot of the uh, scene from the bridge where he where he's on the top and he kind of takes his shirt off and that light is shining on his back. You really can see it's kind of like that like pinkish color. It looks really cool. This suit does have wrist zippers, thankfully. So um, the puff paint helps a lot when it comes to using your phone or anything touch screen. Puff paint is really good for that. I don't know if you guys know that, but if you ever have a suit that just won't work with your phone, put a little, put some dots of puff paint on the fingers and it will 100% help with that. You'll be able to use your phone. Next really cool part of this suit guys is the shoes. So we were able to find some gel Dirt Dog 2s. Unfortunately, we couldn't find the accurate 3s, but they did the job just as well. He only painted one bottom of the soles because I do a lot of flips and stunts in my suit. So I kind of told him, as you can see here, there's not really a point to painting them because they're just going to scuff off. He could have done a little clear layer, but again, it's going to get scuffed. So it doesn't really matter to me. People don't see the bottom of the soles that much. It's really the sides that are important which he got down perfectly. All of that uh, burn and shading is completely accurate. We've got the, uh, the red leather like topping here and this like little gate thing, um, which come on the Dirt Dog 3s, but he had to do that um, by hand and actually sewed that. So that's extremely cool. Let me show you guys the mask. All right, so here is the mask with the T-Jack FX face shell. You gotta you get a good look at that. Oh, look at my ring light. There you go, you can see the uh, the texture all over the mask once again. These frames are T-Jack FX frames that are just a little dirtied up. Um, you can still see those are navy blue. And then these are actual sunglass lenses in here. Those are actual sunglass lenses. You can see all the little black dots. 
Spider Slinger did those by hand. He's now going by the Spectacular Spider-Man on TikTok. So go follow him, I'll put that in the description. There's one more thing on the suit that I wanna show you guys that I think is like extremely cool. Not a lot of people that have the Tasm 1 suit battle damage it. And even when they do, I don't see many at all that have done this to their suit. So I'm really happy that Spider Slinger was able to do it and he was able to do it well. Here we have the web patch from when Peter gets shot in the leg at the end of Tasm 1. I don't know if you guys remember that. I'll put the clip in. So yeah, basically, Peter, you know, gets shot in the leg and then he has to web it up so he can keep doing what he has to do, go fight the lizard. Actually used his working web shooters to shoot all of the web fluid onto the hole that's there. So I think that's really cool and it like makes it more realistic to me. Here's a little bit of a closer look at the web patch can really see like the the strands of webbing in there and stuff it's all hardened now obviously because it's been on there for a couple of weeks now so i'm gonna go ahead and throw this on for you guys real quick but first i want to show you an extra part to this suit that isn't used with it but i haven't got to showcase these in a video yet and there's no point in making a whole video on them okay so these are my tasm one peter parker web shooters which some people like to wear them over their Tasm 1 suit, but since this suit is so film accurate, I'm gonna just stick to that. We just used a, um, just a leather band. This is just a part of a watch, and then this is one little 3D printed part, and a bingo chip, and a bingo chip. One more piece, and then I'm putting the suit on. I've always wanted this, even when I was just going to school, because I wanted to feel like Peter Parker, and now I have it, and literally anytime I go out and I have to bring anything extra than like the normal stuff I keep in my pockets, I bring this because it's so cool. I just love it. This is the Jan Pol This is the Jan Sport Slacker that Peter uses in Tasm 1 and for one scene in Tasm 2 when he's doing his little graduation, he uses this backpack. It's all dirtied up, and, and these are actually accurate as well. He, uh, we went online and found some reference pictures of the actual backpack in like a display and he did that all the way around and of course we could not forget Peter's little writing in here property of Peter Parker I mean if I lose this backpack nobody's gonna be able to return it but I'm not gonna lose it because this backpack is super cool I'm never gonna get rid of it so yeah, let me throw this and the suit and the mask and a show on for you guys. And then uh, that'll be it. So if you guys enjoyed, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you all in the next one. Go follow my Instagram. If you're from my Instagram and you're finally on my YouTube, thank you very much for merging over and checking out my long-term videos. I do a lot of cool edits and stuff on Instagram. So if you guys haven't followed me on there, go check that out. And uh, yeah, enjoy the close-ups. Peace.